Good afternoon. I welcome you to the session of experimental methods in fluid mechanics. And uh, in continuation of my lex last lecture on the temperature measurement, today we will you know discuss about the you know in thermostatic temperature measurement. And for that, we will discuss about the you know operational principle, rather the uh, mechanism of another you know I can say a technique and from there we will see how we can measure temperature. And if we can recall that uh, temperature measurement we have discussed that these are basically uh, resistance temperature detector. So, if I uh, if we try to recall that uh, you know that resistance temperature detectors that is RTD resistance temperature detectors which exploits you know the change in resistance with temperature to measure the temperature. So, these RTD resistance, resistance temperature detectors exploits the change in temperature to change in sorry change in resistance of material with temperature to measure the temperature. That means, when we you know uh, use RTD that is resistance temperature detectors, we exploit the change in resistance of a material, change in resistance with a change in temperature essentially to know what is the temperature change that is if we put this RTD in place where we are uh, you know where our objective is to measure temperature then we need to know what will be the change in resistance of the material which will be in contact with the you know uh, place where we, where, uh, we uh, need to measure temperature and the change in resistance of the material will be you know the rather I can say the resistance of the material will be changed as the material is now in contact with that body or in material is placed in a place where temperature is now uh, you know higher than the material temperature. I mean temperature of the you know measuring device where we have RTD. So, RTD we are placing in place. RTD is in contact with other material where temperature of the material or temperature of the you know working substance of in that you know rather I can say in that place where RTD is you know uh, kept will be higher than the temperature of the RTD material. Now, since the temperature of the material or temperature of the places where we are interested in to measure the temperature. Uh, I mean, where we are interested in measuring the temperature will be definitely higher than the RTD temperature. So, by receiving temperature, by sensing the higher temperature, RTD resistance will be changed, and that is what this mechanism is exploit, you know, exploited to, you know, uh, obtain the uh, temperature measurement. So, we have discussed a few. Today, we will discuss about the thermistors. So, this thermistors is basically uh, I can say uh, is a semiconductor device. I am writing this is a semiconductor device which has you know negative which has negative temperature. coefficient of resistance 
and the resistance of the you know thyristor is given uh, as a function of absolute temperature by the following expression that is R equal to R naught exponential beta into 1 upon T minus 1 upon T naught. So, this is the expression approximate function of the you know uh, uh, the uh, resistance of the trans, uh, trans uh, thermistors as a function of temperature and from there we can you know uh, we will be using this to measure the temperature. Now, in this expression uh, if I write in the next slide in this expression R naught is the resistance at T naught and beta is an material property which is you know determined experimentally and So, the resistance R which is given in the previous slide which is the function of the absolute temperature through this relationship R naught is the resistance at T naught I know. So, and beta is a material constant. So, by now changing the resistance of the material we can calculate, we can measure the temperature of any object of any you know fluidic environment and the temperature of the object or the fluidic you know uh, environment is definitely higher than the temperature of the RTD. So, this is the concept and the concept is similar and uh, uh, which we have discussed in our uh, last classes that is the resistance temperature detectors exploits a change in resistance of the material in order to measure the temperature. That means, when you are placing this you know uh, I can say measuring instrument just we need to know the change in resistance and uh, of course, this expression which we have written today these are basically uh, you know uh, these expressions are not I can say these are approximate ex expression, but uh, the but these expressions are calibrated of course, and uh, R naught which is the resistance at T naught that is known value beta is the material property and typically this beta you know <coughs> this beta is 3500 to 4600 degree Kelvin. So, uh, uh, beta unit should be definitely temperature because beta is multiplied by you know uh, that is R if I go back to my previous slide R is equal to R naught. So, R is the unit of resistance R naught is the unit of resistance. So, beta should be beta should have unit of temperature and that is why the beta material property which is typically varies between these two I mean between this range. So, knowing the value of this quantity which is obtained experimentally we can calculate what will be the you know uh, change in resistance and that change in resistance is a resistance is essentially because of the change in temperature. So, the temperature change which you would like to measure will be obtained if we can measure the change in resistance. Uh, the thermistors 
is extremely sensitive with temperature revolution to within 0 0.01 degree Celsius, of course with proper calibration. That means, what is the meaning of the sentence? That means, we can measure temperature if the change in temperature which is of the order of 10 power minus 2 degree Celsius, if we properly calibrate this uh, device instrument, we can measure temperature. That means, if the order of the change in temperature is 10 power minus 2, still we can measure using this uh, device. So, this is extremely sensitive that I can tell. So, uh, <coughs> this is one and another important advantage of this uh, device is that uh, the you know resistance you know rather I can say thermistors, resistance of the thermistors, thermistor is very large. So, the lead error is not usually significant and that means, if we try to recall uh, you know our discussion which we had in my last class that resistance I mean these are placed and uh, the resistance of the lead which leads to you know significant error in the measurement, but for the thermistors which is again we need to place in the you know uh, uh, that is what we have discussed the circuits that is the Houston bridge. Now, the resistance of the thermistor is very large. So, the lead resistance the lead error, error due to lead resistance is not easily significant and since the resistance I mean of the thermistor is I can say orders higher than the uh, lead resistance. So, the resistance lead, lead resistance is not significant and as a result of which we do not record special wiring that is what we have seen in the last lecture. So, uh, this is the case that uh, the RTD bridge connection that is what we have discussed in my last lecture where we have seen to circumvent the problem associated with the lead resistance we have discussed you know wiring different wiring connections, but for this particular case since the resistance of the thermistors is significantly a very large. So, the lead error is not appreciable and that is why we do not record any special wiring arrangement and I can write this is very important that special wiring arrangement arrangements are not required right so this is the uh, a few important points about this and Lastly, we can say these thermistors are used rather I can say very often used used as temperature Compensation devices 
in electric circuit. In electric circuit, where consistent behavior is required in variable condi ambient conditions. So, this is all about another RTD which is used to measurement measure temperature and this is very sensitive we can measure even when the even when the change is of the order of 10 power minus 2 degree Celsius. So, next we will be discussing about another important you know resistance temperature detectors that is is one of the important resistant temperature detectors that is thermocouples. We have you know read about this uh, temperature measuring instrument in our school level, but uh, just we will try to recapitulate what we have studied and uh, today we will see that again when we will be discussing the thermocouples we will see that thermocouples are essentially used to measure temperature of course, by uh, exploiting the same effect that is change in resistance with temperature. So, the thermocouples uh, I am writing this is most common of the electrical effect temperature measurements. That means, thermocouples RTD and in the last lecture we have discussed about another important that is you know that thermocouples RTDs and thermistors all these you know uh, instruments are using electrical effect to measure the temperature. We have discussed about measurement of temperature exploiting mechanical effects and this module I mean we are discussing wherein the electrical effect is electrical effects are used as I can say to measure the temperature. Thermocouple is most common of the electrical effect temperature measurement temperature measurements and we know that the thermocouple is formed by connecting to dissimilar material. materials to precise to dissimilar metal wires at a junction and so I am writing now the working principle constructional feature. So, first I will try to write the constructional features of the thermocouple then Knowing the constructional feature, we will try to learn the mechanism by how we can measure temperature using this thermocouple. So, next one is at a junction, next one is that this you know joining produces. a voltage across the other ends of the wires which is a function of junction temperature. 
right. So, this is the construction view feature thermocouple is formed. So, if you would like to fabricate then we need to connect to dissimilar materials to be precise to dissimilar metal wires at a junction and when you are connecting these to dissimilar metals at a junction this produces a voltage across the other ends of the wires which is a function of definitely junction temperature. So, now if we need to know the operational principle the mechanism by how thermocouple measures temperature we need to know three basic thermoelectric mechanisms. So, now we should know the three important thermoelectric mechanisms and these three important mechanisms are important to describe to understand the operational principle of the thermocouple and of course, to know by how a thermocouple measures temperature. What are those three important effects? We have studied these effects in our 10 plus 2 level in our physics course. So, but but today just I am trying to recapitulate all those. First is CVEC CVEC effect. What is this? I am although we have studied it, but again I am trying to discuss not in detail, but I am trying to write the uh, what is uh, CVAC effect and why this effect is important to describe the mechanism of the thermocouple. So, what is a CVAC effect? So, that means an EMF that is electromotive force is developed and EMF is developed across the junction of two dissimilar metals and this EMF is a function of temperature. That means, if we connect this to the similar material an electromotive, electromotive force will be developed and of course, across the junction and the EMF which is being developed is a function of the temperature. Next one is Peltier effect. What is this? An EMF is generated across the junction of two dissimilar metals when a current passes through the junction. That means, 
the first one Seebeck effect that an EMF is developed across the junction of two dissimilar metal metals and the EMF which is developed is a function of temperature. Pelletier effect is telling that an EMF will be developed or is generated will be generated across the junction of two dissimilar metals when a current passes through the junction. And third one is also important to know that is Thomson effect. What is this? An EMF is generated from current flowing through a conductor if there is a temperature gradient along the conductor. So, this is the Thomson effect we have studied many times we know it that an EMF is generated from the current flowing through the conductor if there is a temperature gradient along the conductor. So, these three effects we have discussed and these three effects are important to know rather to understand the uh, operation the mechanism of the thermocouples. Say this I can write this Thomson effect is not other I can say is usually ignored ignored as there will be approximately equal and opposite temperature gradient. on either side of the junction. In a typical thermocouple, so this is very important that Thomson effects are usually I mean Thomson effect is usually ignored as there will be equal as well as you know opposite as well as approximately equal temperature gradient on either side of the junction in a typical thermocouple. So, this will produce equal and opposite EMF and which will cancel each other. So, and I can write this will produce equal and opposite EMFs and uh, rather I can say which will cancel each other. Which will cancel each other. So, this is that is why Thomson effect is usually ignored. Now, the Peltier effect can be eliminated by using very high input impedance voltage measuring circuits. That means, we have only Peltier effect Peltier effect and of course, Seebeck effect. 
see back effect. But this Peltier effect can be eliminated. So, if we connect two dissimilar metals at a junction, there will be these three effects, but the Thomson effects we ignore. We have written, that we have discussed why it is ignored usually. Peltier effect also can be eliminated. Why it can be eliminated? So, the Peltier effect can be eliminated um, uh, by using very high input imp imp impedance. Voltage measuring you know circuits. So, this Peltier effect can be uh, eliminated using very high input impedance voltage measuring circuits. I am writing here thus a thermometer can be created by calibrating the output voltage across the non junctions end of the wire. Non junction ends of the wire. If current is very small, so what we have discussed now, we have discussed systematically that the Peltier effect can be eliminated using very high in input impedance voltage measuring circuit. That means, a thermometer can be created by calibrating the output voltage across the non-junction ends of the wire if current is very small. Not only that, thermal environment is same, the thermal environment of each conductor is same, is very small. And so, this is one problem, and thermal environment of each conductor is same. So, these two is satisfied then we can create a thermometer. So, that means two laws are used to construct thermocouple circuits. That means two laws are used to you know construct the thermocouple circuit that is first one is known as the law of intermediate metals what is that uh, if three dissimilar metals are connected in series and temperature of the two junction are the same.
temperature of 2 junctions are same, the thermocouple will produce the same EMF as if there were only two outer metals connected at a single junction. So, this is the law of intermediate metals. If three dissimilar metals are connected in series and temperature of two junctions are same, the thermocouple will produce the same EMF as if there are only two outer metals connected at a single junction. So, if we try to schematically describe this law, then uh, I can show over here. Say this is material 1, this material 2 and this is material 3 and this is E. So, this is material 1, this is material 2, this is material 3. Then what I can do? This is material 1 and this is material 3. this will be the con connection. So, that means, the temperature of two junction are, junctions are same. So, if the temperature over here and temperature over here is same, then the thermocouple will produce same EMF as if they are, they are only two outer metals connected at a single junction. So, this is the case. So, this is the law of intermediate metals. Another one is the law of intermediate temperatures, the law of intermediate temperature. What is this? So, I will write now if say consider a uh, the consider the thermocouple constructed of the same material. Which contain which contain two junction as shown below. So, we are considering the thermocouple which is constructed of the same materials which contain two junction as shown below. So, if I try to draw the schematic then we will find like this. So, this is T2, this is T1 and this is E1. So, the thermocouple is constructed of same materials right and other is, so this is T2, and this is T3, and this is E2. Then if we T1 and T3, then this would be E3 that is nothing but E1 plus E2, right. 
So, the thermocouples constructed of same materials which contains two junction as shown below. So, we have shown here three junction. So, this is case. So, in application I am writing in application what is uh, what if what is found that you know all thermocouples. So, laws of intermediate temperature that means we have uh, thermocouple constructed of same materials which contains junction as shown below then E 3 if we now T 1 and T 2 same material uh, T 2 and T 3 and then if we uh, you know thermocouple have you know T 1 and T 3 then the M F that will be developed that will be equal to E 1 plus E 2. So, now in application all thermocouples you know uh, must contain at least two junction two junctions right. So, one junction is located at the position where we would like to measure temperature and other is located in reference temperature bath. And this reference temperature bath is usually mixture rather I can say equilibrium mixture, mixture of ice and air saturated distilled water. at atmospheric pressure right and content in a flask and content in a Dior flask. The mixture, so what is done? One junction is located of course, that is what I was telling that should be located at in a position at the position where we would like to measure the temperature while the other end will be located in the reference temperature bath and the reference temperature bath is usually the mixture of ice and air saturated distilled water and the temperature which will be produced is 0 degree Celsius. So, that means what we can say that this if we now go to the this constructional feature that is the this effect will produce equal and opposite I mean the thumbs uh, sorry this is the uh, important effect that an EMF will be developed across the junction of two dissimilar metals and the EMF which is developed that will be function of temperature. If we now place the temp one end at the reference temperature bath why do we know? the temperature is 0 degree Celsius temperature while the other end is placed or connected in place where would where temperature we would like to measure. So, now the temperature I mean because of this temperature difference we will have an EMF which is produced. If we can measure that EMF that is what the electrical effect that is used we can measure the temperature. As I said Thomson effects is usually ignored and we have discussed why this effect is ignored because the this the there will be approximately equal and opposite 
temperature gradient on either side of the junction. So, in a typical thermometer, so this will produce equal and opposite EMFs and which will cancel each other. Peltier effects are eliminated by using very you know in high input impedance voltage measuring circuit. So, the you know uh, and also we have written that we can have a thermometer which can be created by calibrating the output voltage across the non-junction ends of the wire and that is the working principle of the thermocouple to measure the temperature. So, we have discussed about the you know thermocouples constructional feature we have discussed that thermocouple is formed by connecting to dissimilar metals at a junction and this produce a voltage across the other ends of a other ends of the wire which is function nothing but the function of junction temperature. So, that means, uh, the voltage. So, if we if we other ends of the wire and which is function of a junction temperature. So, this is the effect we are using to measure the temperature and to understand that we need to know three important effects that is Sivect effect, Peltier effect and the Thomson effect. These three effects we have studied in our 10 plus 2 level, but today just I have recapitulated, we have tried to recapitulate all these three effects and we have discussed that Thomson effects is usually ignored because the if I mean uh, uh, the EMF which is produced which will be equal and opposite and they will cancel each other. Peltier effects can be eliminated by considering high input impedance voltage measuring circuits. So, from these three effects we can say that as if a thermometer can be calibrated can be thermometer can be created by calibrating the output voltage across the non-junction ends of the wire if current is very small. So, current is not very small current is not very high and of course, the thermal environment is of each conductor is same. So, and from there we have you know uh, we have seen two laws which are used to you know construct the thermocouple circuit the laws of intermediate methods and the laws of intermediate temperature and we have seen that when we are placing any thermometer a thermocouple which are in, in, in most I can say in all the application rather in most of the applications thermocouples must rather in all applications thermocouple uh, used to measure temperature I mean will have at least two junctions that is obvious that all the thermocouples will have at least two junction rather in applications where it is used to measure the temperature. One junction is located at the position where you would like to measure the temperature, other junction is placed is kept in a reference temperature bath where temperature is maintained at 0 degree Celsius temperature. Now, if the other end temperature will be definitely higher than the temperature of the reference temperature. Now, as I said uh, this thermometer, so as if other end is placed in a place where temperature is higher than the uh, temperature of the reference bath of course and temperature of the uh, measuring instrument. So, we can now have output voltage across the non-junction ends. And that voltage if we uh, using this by calibrating this voltage uh, we can uh, we can measure the temperature. So, to summarize today's discussion we have discussed about another two important RTDs I mean measuring instrument temperature measuring instrument which you know exploit the electrical effect one is thermistors we have discussed that again exploit the change in resistance of a material with a change in temperature in order to measure the temperature. And in the second one we have discussed the thermocouples which is largely used in most of the applications and in most of the applications uh, the th thermocouples used will have two junction and to understand 
you know the you know we have discussed about the constructional feature and then from the constructional feature how we can measure temperature that is also we have discussed and to know that to understand that we need to know three important effects that we have discussed and finally we have seen that essentially a thermometer can be created by calibrating the output voltage across the non junction ends of the wire if current is very small and also the thermometer environment of each conductor is same and from there we have seen that two laws are used to construct the thermocouple circuits one is the laws of intermediate metals and laws of intermediate temperature so with this i stop my discussion today and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.